talking about the ballpark experience for the fans. Other than a good game, what do you expect when you come to the park? What especially do you like, and is there something you would like to see in the future? Give us a call, 749-9999. Send me an email, sos at wcpo.com. I'm rejoined by Red's Chief Operating Officer, Phil Castellini. Let me get to an email here. We were at the ballpark yesterday. The views of the Ohio River are outstanding. We applaud the acquisition of Sin Chu Chu. Clearly a player who approaches the game with a passion and has fun at the same time. He's making a difference, and he gets on base a lot. There's no question about it. If, if anything, I've been really enthusiastic about this first week is, is watching him. I got to see him a little bit at spring training, but this whole week he's, he's had a presence in every game we've played, and you just feel great about that acquisition, having him out there in center. Yeah. Let's go to uh, Solomon is on the phone. Solomon from Price Hill. Go ahead, Solomon. Hey, Poppy. How you doing? Okay. What's up? Uh, well, um, Phil, I had a chance to meet Phil down at the stadium. Uh, I got a little league baseball team down in the West End. And uh, the, when the game was over, we was uh, at the elevators leaving out. And Phil was at the elevator also. Uh, him and I guess a couple of his kids. And he just... Uh, Asked uh, me, uh, did me and the kids enjoy ourselves? And I was like, they sure did. We had a real good time. And uh, I said, well, uh, who are you to ask me? <laughs> and he was like, well, my name is Phil. I'm the son of uh, the owner of the uh, organization. And I was like, oh, oh, tell your dad. I said, thank you for his kindness and for the guys, they really enjoy themselves. I mean, I, I had one kid. We was up in the uh, uh, VIP booth, and one kid come back in the uh, booth, and he was like, Coach Solomon, I'm really having a good time here. And that really put a smile on my face. And just to see the kids in the West End had a real nice time. And got a chance to experience a big league ballpark, which they probably would have never in their lifetime. Again, Phil, thanks for everything, and uh, tell your dad thanks. And uh, and one more thing, Phil, do we have it to? We would have won that game, that left inning game. We would won that game. We had him. Well, thanks, guys. Uh, well, Solomon, first of all, thank you for what you're doing with the kids and coaching and, and yep. keep, keeping kids playing baseball. That's what it's all about. As you know, we're doing a lot in the community in that space with our Reds Community Fund. But uh, as far as Hamilton goes, trust me, we're all excited to see him come up. I think he's going to continue to develop in the minor leagues. I would not be surprised if you see him at some point this season. But, uh, you know, hopefully guys stay healthy at the major league level and you don't have a need to rush him. And, and so, you know, those type of things are, are better left in the hands of our baseball department. I know those guys know what they're doing, as evidenced by what you see on the field. But we're excited to get him up here as well as you are. Yeah, and that's a luxury this team has now. You think about Homer Bailey. He probably could have used a couple years in the minor leagues, but they needed him at that time. Yeah, there's no question about it. And, and you know, you can never tell. But certainly uh, I feel like uh, watching Homer as long as I have have, it felt like last year it seemed to all click together for him, and, and, sure and I think maybe a guy like him that came up maybe a little soon affected his development, but he certainly got it all together now. Phil, this is from Grandma Audrey. My husband and I have a season package. We enjoy the game and take the grandkids with us. We have a couple of grandkids allergic to peanuts. Is there any plans to have a peanut-free area? The ushers are very good at trying to move us away from the nuts. The kids are very allergic, and this does not always work. Uh, to be honest with you, that's something I'd never even thought about. Now, well, actually, we, we think about it all the time and talk to fans who have this issue. It's a very serious issue, and the peanut allergy can really range in its severity <laughs> depending on the, on the child. And, and I will tell you, we had an, uh, a peanut-free game last year where uh, Cincinnati Bell and John Birds and Cincinnati, Tech, uh, Cincinnati Bell Technology Solutions were nice enough to, to give up the boat, uh, riverboat for a night, hmm. and at least we could isolate the kids there. The, the concern about a section, I, I mentioned the severity of the allergies. Even if I have a section, we get a big wind happening or a, a, a squall blows in, and all of a sudden that stuff's blown all, the, all around the stadium. And even if I had a, a segregated area, it doesn't mean that, that kind of uh, the shells and the casings and that kind of thing can blow into that restricted area. So we're, we're real concerned about our ability to keep something like that safe. On a one-off basis, uh, uh, Papa, we've had a lot of people call in, and sometimes, if available, we can provide a suite 
uh, mm -hmm. uh, at a discount or what have you during a weekday, maybe in the lower attended games, uh, to try and get somebody who's got a child with that uh, illness or several to get to the ballpark and be able to experience it. But it, it is a difficult thing to manage both for the parents and us as a facility. I can imagine. Uh, Tony writes, can you ask Phil if they plan to bring back any great events such as Reds Uncut live at the Aronoff or the Reds Future Game they've had in recent years? Also, can they please expand Reds Fest to three days to help relieve the size of the crowds? Thanks, Tony. Obviously a guy that enjoys a lot of your extracurriculars. Yeah, and, and, and he's asking Asking the right questions. Uh, I'll start, I'll, I'll go backwards. Uh, first, Reds Fest, there's no question uh, we've talked a lot about a third day Sunday. I think a couple of challenges. One, every other year we seem to have a conflict with the Bengal game. Mm -hmm. That would be a real challenge. Uh, and it's, it's a very taxing event on our staff as well as uh, the uh, coaches and players that come in. And, you know, we're really running those guys around for a solid two or three days. So we're a little concerned that adding that third day would be taxing on them as well. So, so far, Reds Fest going to stick with the two-day program. Uh, as far as um, the other events, you know, uh, Uncut was one of the better events cool. we've ever put together. The, the purpose of it was to connect fans and players, but really as a, as a community fund, fundraiser and uh, unfortunately just didn't raise a lot of money uh, mm -hmm. based on that format. As far as the Futures game go, we love that format as well. As you know, the Dayton Dragons did it a couple years ago. We had it um, last year. This year there were required exhibition games that had to take place in, in Arizona and so each year that's going to be a little questionable when the team will get back into town. Uh, things like the World Baseball Classic effect schedules and the like. I think you'll probably see us do a Futures game again in park before you'll see us do the uncut. As much fun as we had doing that event we really, when we have an all-team ask like that and, and make a connection with the fans, we got to figure out a way to make more money for the charities than we were able to at that event. Okay, a few more minutes with Phil Castellini. Give us a call, 749-9999. But first, it's time to deliver 